Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I know these glasses say 2014, but they were the only ones that I had, and I wanted to wish you guys a happy new year. This is the first time I'm doing a video like this on my channel, but I haven't done a kind of review video in a long time to tell you guys what's new, what's coming up, and I also wanted to share, you know, what I did last year and some of the updates to the channel. So I'm really excited to be here chatting with you guys and doing kind of a little bit of a 2022 review, sharing some of my favorite videos, some of the superlatives from the videos that I made and what you can expect in 2023. 2022 was awesome. It like every year, of course, went by extremely fast. And I jammed a lot of stuff into last year. I went to a couple new countries. I spent a lot of time here in the US, notably in Idaho and Montana, doing a lot of videos on things to do in those states and ended the year with some international travel as well. So I'm gonna get into that in just a second. This video is sponsored by Aura. Let's go back and I'm going to tell you where we left off in the last video. So if you watched the last video, I was in Yosemite National Park, which is here in the Eastern Sierras in Northeastern California. And this is one of my favorite California parks. I go there every couple years. I'd never been in the winter. So this was my first time experiencing it in the snow and it was a lot of fun. My car is not great in the snow, I will say. The thing doesn't weigh anything, so <laughs> the roads were a bit treacherous for me. If you're going to Yosemite, you need chains, and I definitely had to pick some up on my way into the park, but if you guys haven't watched that video, please check it out. And uh, after I left Yosemite, I came back here to Los Angeles just for a couple of days, repacked, and then jetted off to Spokane, Washington, which is where my boyfriend's family actually lives and we spend pretty much every Christmas holiday there. It was really, really cold, like below zero the entire week. So that really put a damper on our usual kind of winter activities that we get to do. So we were kind of stuck in the house for a bunch of days, did a lot of puzzles and had a really good time just catching up with family. From there, we went to Mexico City with some friends. And I actually spent the summer of 2021 in Mexico City, so it was nice to be back as a tourist. I got to do a lot of the stuff I didn't get to do when I was there working a couple summers ago. I got to go to a place called Grutas Tolentango, which, oh my gosh. <laughs> there may be a video on this in the future, but I don't have finite plans to do that right now. But Grutas Tolentango is this beautiful hot spring the river there is this aqua blue from all of the minerals and there are waterfalls that you can swim under. There are caves that you can swim in and it has this cascading tier of about 40 different hot spring pools that you can actually sit in. There's also a zip line. So this is one of my favorite parts of our trip to Mexico City. This is about four hours north of Mexico City, so it's not super close to town. But we also did a lot of other touristy things like going to the museum. Um, we went to Xochimilco as well, which is this World Heritage Site south of Mexico City with all these really cool little uh, river boats that are decorated with really festive colors and it's where all the flowers in Mexico City come from. So that was really fun as well. And then from there, I went straight to Canada. I actually stopped in LA, quickly exchanged suitcases and then headed up to Banff. So this will be coming out soon on the channel but I went with my best friend for a couple of days. She left and then I did a little bit of a solo trip there, but <clears throat> had a really good time re-experiencing Banff in the winter. Got to go skiing, ice climbing, and just did a photography tour along the Icefields Parkway. So I'm really excited to show you guys that video in the next couple of weeks as well. Right before I left for this trip, I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone when the line went dead. Turns out someone was in the process of stealing his identity. They'd hacked into his phone, his emails, his bank accounts, and his crypto accounts, and were in the process of trying to steal as much as they possibly could. Identity theft is one of the fastest growing crimes in America. There's actually a new victim every 14 seconds, and I don't want it to happen to anyone else I know or any of you ever again, which is why I'm really excited to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Aura. 
Aura is identity theft protection. It's also fraud monitoring. It's got a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. Now you might have one of these services already, but if you don't have all of these tools, it's like locking your front door, but leaving the back door wide open. Those who've had their identity stolen are often shocked when it happens. I mean, imagine trying to log into your email account one day only to see that the password was changed just hours ago. Then you start getting notifications of activities from your bank, your credit cards, your crypto accounts, etc. This is exactly what happened to my friend. Now, it's super scary and unfortunately it's a reality for way too many people. But thankfully, Aura monitors the dark web for your emails, your passwords, your social security numbers, and it sends alerts fast right to your phone and email so that you can fix things in real time if something bad does happen. Aura also gives you real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like if someone was opening a loan or a credit card in your name, which hopefully never happens to you. Aura's VPN also allows you to stay anonymous online, but keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. So to protect your family and yourself from identity theft, you need to go to aura.com backslash Alice. And I've also linked this down in the description. If you sign up right now, Aura is actually going to give you two weeks of a free trial with my link so that you can see for yourself how many times Aura finds you or your family members' personal information on the dark web. Before I get into what's coming up in 2023, I wanted to go over some of the channel metrics from this year, share some of my favorite videos, some of my least favorite videos of 2022. So overall on my channel last year, I had 5,000 new subscribers, 684,000 views. I flew many thousands of miles, which I'm gonna be offsetting as well. And I'm gonna be doing that going forward. As I travel more, I am gonna definitely be paying a lot more attention to how many miles I'm flying so that I can offset those. My best viewed video of 2022 was Long's Peak. And this was not made last year, but this video is still doing really well on my channel. And I hope it inspires more people to get out and try hiking and try backpacking. The best viewed video of last year that was made last year was my 24 hours of sun summer in Lapland, Finland. I had a really good time making this video and a really good time in Finland. I wish I had been able to stay longer, but I'm really glad that so many of you watched this video and enjoyed the beautiful stunning scenery of Finland in summer. You know, when I was there, I got to go biking and hiking and see the reindeer running in the woods, in the wild. So all in all, fantastic trip. I love Scandinavia. As you guys have seen on my channel, Norway, Sweden, now Finland. Uh, this is an area of the world I hope to keep exploring and I hope you guys enjoy those videos. Least viewed video of 2022. Do you guys think you know what it is? Well, you probably didn't watch it, but the least viewed video was actually my video from St. Mary's, Idaho. This is a very small town in the northern panhandle of Idaho. It's got a ton of wilderness around it and national forest. When I was there, I was actually there with the tourism board and we went out on a four by four adventure on a side by side way off into the national forest. I also got to go fishing on Lake Coeur d'Alene when I was there. And overall, I had a lot of fun. I wish I had had more time in this destination because I don't think that I had enough time to really shoot what I needed to shoot. And a lot of the times when I'm invited by a tourism board, it's kind of difficult to oftentimes finagle having the time that I need to be able to get the content that I want to serve you guys. Because sometimes, like with St. Mary's, I had 36 hours in the destination and it just wasn't enough time. So if you guys are interested in Idaho, I hope you go back and watch some of my Idaho series because it's a really beautiful place, even though the politics and some of the uh, local personalities might get in the way of you discovering <laughs> this state. And I'll leave it at that PC answer. <laughs> Most challenging video to film. This is a hard one because a lot of Ecuador was really challenging to film. My drone broke the second day I was there 
uh, in the Amazon. It just kind of had like a malfunction. And then unfortunately in Ecuador, I couldn't get really a hold of DJI. I had to actually go buy a new drone. And in Ecuador, they're about 100% more expensive than they are here in the US. So that was a, a bit of a, an issue when I was there. And uh, the other issue in the Galapagos was that my camera actually deleted two entire cards of underwater footage. So I definitely had some camera issues in Ecuador that made filming that entire series really difficult, which is why it took me quite a while to get a lot of those videos out. And my video on the Galapagos is still on the editing room floor. So that will be out later, maybe in February of this year. The scariest video that I shot last year, definitely the Dolomites. If you guys haven't watched this yet, I did a solo trip to the Dolomites. I did some hut to hut hiking on my second to last day there. I did a Via Ferrata and I really was not expecting it to be as scary as it was. There were quite a few sections with no cables. I almost didn't even start this Via Ferrata because I was terrified. Um, and finally a gentleman came and I decided to follow him, but this was definitely one of the scariest videos I've ever had to film because I was scared. <laughs> and it wasn't even about whether or not I was gonna drop my camera off a cliff. It was just, am I gonna be able to get through this hike without having a heart attack? <laughs> so I'm glad I did. And if you guys haven't watched that, please check it out on the channel. And lastly, the most underrated video of 2022 was definitely my climb up Cotopaxi, which is the second tallest volcano and mountain in Ecuador. It's six feet higher than Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. And unfortunately, the conditions that I had when I climbed this were pretty freaking terrible. Um, I had no view at the top and it was a real challenging hike because you do it in such a short amount of time. But I spent a couple of days acclimating before I tried Cotopaxi, but I'd really love it if more people went and watched this video because it really is a good one. 2023 goals. Oh my goodness, guys. I, this year has been so weird because usually at the beginning of the year, I know exactly what my goals are going to be for that year. I have a list where I've outlined what I'm doing in each part of my life from YouTube to stunts to content creation, blog posts, things like that. And I check everything off and I am really diligent about writing those down, putting them on my bulletin board or the front of my computer and knowing exactly what the year is going to come to. This year, I just have not done that. Not yet anyways. And I think that's okay if you're in the same boat as me. It's okay to not have your perfect plan for the year yet. And right now I'm a little bit struggling because I feel like I should have that done and so I'm being a little bit hard on myself. But I do have a lot of ideas of what I wanna do this year. <clears throat> and one of the things here on YouTube is that I do wanna do one video every week, long form content. I got away from that last year because my work schedule in the movie industry was a little bit too busy and I also was traveling a ton. I also had a lot of deadlines for a lot of the travel content that I was putting out. So I pushed things around and made it hard for me to be consistent. But this year, number one is just trying to get that consistency back and have one video every week here on the channel. As I was saying, I don't have a super specific list of videos that I'm making in 2023 yet, but I have a bucket list and this year I want to start checking off some of the things from this bucket list. Things like swimming with whale sharks and wing walking and doing some of these bucket list hikes that are on my list. And I also want to hear from you. If you have things on your bucket list that you want to experience, I would love for you to share them with me and I can add them to my list and start checking them off as well. This is a new show idea and I hope that it's one that people can latch on to because I think it's gonna be really fun. I'm gonna to try to do a lot of really cool adrenaline junkie stuff and also some of the cool, challenging, physically challenging things. I also wanna have the staples of this channel 
stay here, obviously. That means more national parks. That means more physical challenges like solo backpacking, cool multi-day hiking and trekking routes, awesome mountain routes like Machu Picchu and the Salcante Trek. So there's a lot of things on the radar. I don't have a lot of specifics yet, but know that I am planning to make this channel awesome and take things up a notch on the adventure and on the excitement. When I make videos and I travel to new places, I definitely look for a couple things. That's indigenous cultures, that's really cool, natural, wild landscapes, wildlife, sustainability. And I also wanna have more cool hotels this year, more cool travel experiences that are just super unique, super once in a lifetime. So hope to be showcasing that a lot more on this channel as well. Most of all, I just wanted to tell you guys all how excited I am for you to be here and thank you for supporting this channel, for liking, for commenting, for subscribing, for sharing this channel and any of these videos with a friend. It means the world to me and one of the things, one of the reasons why I've continued to make content for so many years, even though my subscribers still aren't where I want them to be, is because when I make a new video and it connects with someone and they thank me for the fact that maybe they took their first solo hike or <laughs> they went backpacking for the first time because they watched one of my videos, it is amazing and it is just so wonderful to be able to share my inspiration for the outdoors and see that it inspires others to get outside. So thank you guys so much. And if you're new here watching this video for the first time or just watched one of my other videos for the first time and are finding this one, thank you for subscribing and thank you for being here. Drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear about your bucket lists, your travel plans for 2023. If there's any places that are new and unique or super sustainable or super off the wall that you would love to see a video on, drop it down below and don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I will see you on the next adventure. I am so excited for what's to come. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. Bye.